Hey everybody, Miguel here. Um, I'm gonna do a brief introduction to deep multi-agent reinforcement learning. Okay, first uh, let's talk about the the view of uh, reinforcement learning. So you typically have this, you've seen this diagram before with a quote-unquote environment, the world on the right side and the agent on the left side. Um, what we're representing here is that there is some interaction going on between the agent and the environment, right? Typically, the environment gives some observations to the agent. The agent can do some processing there and then can uh, give some actions uh, to the environment. So to try to, you know, influence the environment in a certain way, so to maximize uh, the reward, okay? This is the single agent view. In the multi-agent case, we go from the MDP to stochastic gains. Uh, this G over here is now a state uh, action U, set of actions. Then we have the transition function P, the reward function, uh, emission probability, and then the observation space. This is related to your palm DPs. Um, N is going to be the number of agents, and then you have gamma here, which is uh, the discount factor. The point here, though, is that we have agents that belong to that, you know, set one through N. Um, and then now your transition function is going to depend on the joint action. This means action, you have two agents, agent one and agent two, each select an action, right? And then the joint action is that bold uh, U that you see in there. So the probability of the next state S prime is going to be uh, dependent on the current state and the joint action. And that's going to give that distribution of how the world transitions uh, based on all those, you know, all of, all of that, all of those uh, dynamics. Uh, we also have the reward function here. And in this case, then uh, it's going to be the state and the action, the joint action that is, and then the agent, right? So this is going to be a per agent reward function. Now, you know, you, you, you can basically ignore this, right? And then you can give a, a, a reward that is common to the group, right? But this is a general form in which that, that, that we discuss multi-agent RL, right? So state, um, again, the state, uh, the action, the joint action U, and then the agent uh, index there, okay? And, and, and is, everything is the same other than this. That, that's kind of the, the problem formulation that we, we want you to be aware of. So this would look like, you know, multiple agents interacting in the world. Now, the issue here is that, as you can imagine, um, to this agent, let's call it the main agent, the, the environment looks like a non-stationary environment. Why? Because the underlying probability distributions of the environment, of things that happen, are being changed because the policies that these guys are running are going to be improving. So this is a learning agent. These are learning agents. What's going to happen is that the world looks like it's shifting. It's non-stationary. The distributions of the world, it's like it's, they are shifting. This is particularly true when you have games, right? When you have, um, you know, uh, I'm going to put the extreme, which is adversarial games, right? That other... Uh, agent on the other side is learning as you learn and then so as you learn a tactic your your opponent already learned a new tactic and then so you have to learn again and adapt to the new tactic and so on so that is the main challenge that we have under under the multi-agent RL. there are other but to keep it simple this is what we're gonna what we're gonna do so let's go a little bit further and i want you to think uh, the, the, the common uh, way of thinking of, of RL is you have an agent that controls one platform in the world, 
right? So when I say self-driving cars, you think of one agent controlling the car. And while that is a common setup, this is not the only setup that you should be thinking about, right? Um, you can have, obviously, another agent controlling that other platform. That would be a multi-agent scenario here. You know, they, they seem to be in different parts of the world, but assume they're on the same road. Uh, that is a multi-agent uh, scenario. They can also be, this is a, a little counterintuitive. You can have multiple, multiple agents controlling a single platform. You can have this agent controlling uh, the speed, and you can have this agent controlling the steering of this uh, vehicle, right? Whether that's a good idea or not, that's a different conversation. I'm saying that you can imagine uh, that setting. And moreover, you can imagine also the setting in which you have one agent controlling multiple platforms, right? And in this case, I want to make clear that this portion over here, that is not multi-agent. This, this centralized view of the problem, um, I, there's a lot of people that refer to it as multi-agent because it's multi-platform. You have multiple entities being controlled, but when you have a single agent with a centralized controller, uh, we don't necessarily refer to that as multi-agent, at least not in this course, okay? So that is not multi-agent. In this case though, the multi-agent aspect is when you have multiple of these guys back here, and they need to, in some way, interact. So in terms of code, um, in, in, if you're using uh, an API such as OpenAI Gym, this is gonna look like, uh, for instance, when you have the, the dev, um, let's say, uh, step function with actions. Right, this object over here is gonna be an index, right? So it's gonna be, you can think of it as agent one, and that is gonna have the action of agent one, and then you can have the other index, uh, the other key of the dictionary, agent two, and that's gonna be some other thing and so on, right? And then when you return, um, and I'm gonna write it over here, when you return this typically is observations, rewards, um, then you have dons, right? And then the info dictionary. Uh, we're gonna forget about that for a second. Also, it depends on whether you're using gymnasium uh, at any given time, gymnasium, or you're using OpenAI Gym, kind of standard, our lib, multi-agent uh, wrapper. Um, but typically, if, if you're using the our lib one, um, then these observations are gonna have the same structure, right? So it's gonna be a dictionary that is gonna have the, the, the key, it's gonna be the agent ID, and then the value is gonna be the actual observation corresponding to that agent. And we can get into the details as to how this is gonna look, but again, it's gonna be one key for this agent, one key for this agent, and then one key for this agent per agent, not necessarily per flap platform. Unfortunately, I, I had three platforms here. I probably should, should have another one. <laughs> but uh, what, what, we, what I want to say is that these three are actually per agent um, and not necessarily per platform. So that mapping is important for you to uh, have. And um, it, it's a good takeaway also for uh, kind of more in-practice conversation. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be recording this video into smaller chunks, so this is this is it for now.